I welcome you to the Deerfield School production of Guys and Dolls. There are a few changes in our cast tonight that I'd like to announce. Anthony Apigo will be playing the part of Lieutenant Brannigan. Jason Klein, who was scheduled to play it, is ill, but he is with us this evening. Jason, welcome. <laughs> Stephanie Schofield will be playing Angie the Ox. Michael McGee is playing Rusty Charlie for Jonah Butler, who is ill. Jeremy Klein is playing trumpet in the mission band instead of Jenny Pyrus. And Jessica Butler is playing sax tonight in the mission band. We welcome you, we ask you to sit back. Please remain quiet. Give the actors the respect. They have worked tremendously hard in preparing this show. And I turn the program over to Mrs. Marafi.
Resist the devil and he will flee from you. That is what the Bible tells us. Hear me, you gamblers, with your dice, your cards, your horses. Just around the corner is our little mission where you are always welcome to seek refuge from this jungle of sin. Join me, brothers and sisters, in resisting the devil and we can put the devil... Remember, friends, the Save a Soul mission located at 409 West 49th Street, open all day and all night. Oh, never mind. Poor Miss Sarah. I wonder why our fine doll like her is caught up in the mission dodge. Yeah, too bad such a doll has to go and spend all her time being good. Maybe she owns a piece of the mission. Yeah. Harry the horse, how are you? You know nicely, nicely, Johnson. Yeah, how goes it? Nicely, nicely, thank you. Well, how about, what about the name of the trick? Has he got a place for a trap game yet? He's still looking for a place. The heat is on. Well, tell him I'm loaded and late for, I'm loaded looking for action. I just acquired 5,000 potatoes. 5,000 bucks? Where'd you acquire it? Well, I collected the reward on my father. Everybody's looking for action. I just hope Nathan finds a... Uh... Why, Lieutenant Brannigan. Mr. Southridge, it's Lieutenant Brannigan of the New York Police Department. A pleasure. Either of you guys seen Nathan Detroit? Which Nathan Detroit is this? I mean the Nathan Detroit I've been running a floating crap team around here. You can tell him from me that I know right now he's running around trying to find a spot. Hey, Nathan. Hello, fellas. I'm having terrible trouble. Everybody's scared on account of that lousy Brannigan. And I can't... Something wrong, Mr. Detroit? Oh, Lieutenant Brannigan. I hope you don't think I was talking about you. There are other lousy Brannigans. Detroit, I imagine we're having a hard time finding a place for the crap game. Well, the heat is on. And you must know from the fact that you now have to live on your salary. Nathan, did you find a place for the game? Yeah, it was just over the Fort Mill garage. Joey says he might take a chance and let you use the place if I give him a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks? Shh. In cash. Nathan, can't you do something? What can I do? I'm flat out broke. I couldn't even buy Adelaide a present today. And you know what today is? It's my and Adelaide's 14th anniversary. We've been engaged 14 years. <laughs> Nathan, concentrate on the game. The town's up to here with high rollers. The Greek's in town. Brandy Bottle Bait. Scranton Slim. I know. I can make a fortune. 
but where can I have the game? The billboard garage wants the grand, but we ain't got a grand on hand. And they now got a lock on the door of the gym at public school 84. There's a stack room behind McClowski's bar, but this is McClowski, ain't a good scout. Being how they are, the back of the police station's out. So the billboard garage is the spot, but the one thousand bucks we ain't got. Why is good old reliable Nate, 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 Nate in Detroit? If you're looking for action, he'll furnish the spot. Even when the heat is on, it's never too hot. Why is good old reliable name? And for it's always just a short walk to the oldest established permanent floating crap game in New York. Got it. Gentlemen, gentlemen, do not worry. Nathan Detroit's crap game will float again. My boys let you know where it is. Sky Masterson. Now there's the highest player of them all. Maybe you can borrow the thousand from Sky. Borrow? With him, that kind of money ain't borrowing money. It's betting money. You would bet Sky Masterson? I ain't scared. I'm perfectly willing to take the risk. Providing I make a bet in which there's no chance of losing. Oh, go into Mindy's restaurant and find out how many pieces of cheesecake and how many pieces of strudel he sold yesterday. How many pieces of cheesecake? Yeah. How much strudel? What do you want to know for? Just go. Now here comes Adelaide. If she finds a money in the crap game, she'll never set foot on me again. Hello, Nathan. Adelaide. Oh, you go ahead, Gills. Order me a tuna fish on rye and a chocolate sundae with tomato ketchup and mayonnaise. Okay, Adelaide. We gotta get back to the hot box. You're still rehearsing? Yeah. That slave driver, Charlie, he's been working us all day. Finally, I says, look, Charlie, I'm starving. I gotta get out of here and get something to eat. And he says, you don't wanna eat. You just wanna sneak out and meet that cheap bum, Nathan Detroit. What did you say to him? I says, I told him, I'll meet whoever I want. Nice and happy anniversary. A present for me? I hope you like it. A belt. Oh, read the card. Sugar is sweet, and so is jelly. So put this belt around your belly. <laughs> That's so sweet. Listen, honey, I'm sorry, but I temporarily do not have a present for you. I'm sorry. No, I kind of like it when you forget to give me presents. It makes me feel like we're married. <laughs> Don't worry, honey. One day we'll be in the, in the money, and you'll have more mink than a mink. I'm okay, just so long as you don't start running that crap game again. The crap game. <laughs> what an absurd thought. Hold on. Nathan, yesterday Mindy sold 1,200 cheesecake and 1,500 strudel. More strudel than cheesecake? That's great. Nathan, what is this? Nothing, Adelaide. I'm, I'm just expecting a fellow, and I, I know you're hungry, so... Nathan, are you trying to get rid of me? No, I just... Don't want your sandwich to get soggy, that's all. Nathan! 
Nathan, you'll promote you. How are you, Sky? Going to be in town long? Flying to Havana tomorrow. Havana? Yes, there's a lot of action down there. Do you want to come with me? Nah, I got a lot of things to Tell me, you hungry? Maybe we can go to Mindy's and have a piece of cheesecake or strudel or something. No, nah, I think I'll catch the late results. But you will admit that Mindy's has the best cheesecake in the whole country. I am quite partial to Mindy's cheesecake. <laughs> Who ain't? Yet, what do you think he sells more of? Cheesecake or strudel? Well, if everybody's like I am, I'd say Mindy sells more cheesecake than strudel. <laughs> For how much? What? I'll bet you a thousand bucks that Mindy sold more strudel than cheesecake yesterday. Nathan, let me tell you a little story. Uh, oh. When I was a young man about to go out into the world, my father says to me a very valuable thing. Son, the old guy says, one of these days during one of your travels, a guy is going to come up to you with a brand new deck of cards and offer to bet that he can make the jack of spades jump down and squirt cider in your ear. But son, do not take this bet, for as sure as you're standing there, you will wind up with an ear full of cider. Now, Nathan, I do not claim that you have been clocking Mindy's cheesecake. You don't, you don't think that, you, you don't think that, do you? However, if you are still looking for some action, I'll bet you the same thousand that you do not know the color of the necktie that you have on. Well? No bet. Blue. What a crazy color. You should meet Adelaide to the drugstore. She says to pick her up after the show at the hot box and don't be late. Yes, dear. I mean, okay. <laughs> yes, dear. That is husband talk if I ever heard it. Nathan, you are trapped. In Adelaide, you have found the kind of doll that is most difficult to unload. I don't want to unload her. I love Adelaide. And a guy without a doll, well, a doll is a necessity. Nathan, I'm not putting the rap on dolls. I'm just figuring, wait for age, all dolls are the same. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Then how come you ain't got a doll? How come you're always flying to Havana without one? I like to travel light, but if I wish to take a doll to Havana, there's a large assortment available. Not real high-class dolls. Any doll. You name her. Will you bet on that? Will you bet a thousand bucks that I name any doll he'll take you to Havana tomorrow? You gotta bet. Father, I got cider in my ear. Indeed we do. Didn't I see you a little while ago on Broadway? Possibly. I've been wandering around trying to get up the courage to come in here. Here are two of our pamphlets. They will give you a good deal of comfort. Thank you. And we're holding a midnight prayer meeting on Thursday. 
which I'm sure you will wish to attend. I'm sure, Miss Sarah. How do you know my name? Allow me to introduce myself, Sky Masterson. I hope you do not think I'm being rude, but I think it's wonderful to see a pretty doll, uh, a nice looking lady like you, sacrificing herself for the sake of others. Here is another pamphlet that I think you should read. Thank you. Of course, I will need a lot of personal help from you. I will be speaking at the Thursday prayer meeting. I need private lessons. Why don't we have dinner or something? I think not. Tell me, Mr. Masterson, why are you here? I told you, I'm a sinner. You're lying. Well, wine's a sin. Look, I'm a big <laughs> sinner. And if you get me, it's eight to five. The others will follow. Why don't you let me help you? I bet I could fill this place with sinners. I don't bet. I'll make you a proposition. When is this meeting of yours? Thursday? I guarantee to fill that meeting with one dozen genuine sinners. And what's my end of the bargain? Have dinner with me. Why do you want to have dinner with me? I'm hungry. Here. What's this? Sky Masterson's marker for 12 sinners. If you don't think it's good, ask anybody in town. I owe you one dozen sinners. I'll pick you up at noon tomorrow for dinner. At noon? It'll take us some time to get there. To get where? El Cafe Cubana in Havana. Havana? Where else do you want to eat? Red Lobster? <laughs> Look, the plane gets us there in five hours and back the same night, and the food is great. Please go away. Somewhere in the world, there must be a guy who might appeal to the sergeant. I wonder what this guy will be like. He will not be a gambler. I'm not interested in what he will not be. I'm interested in what he will be. Don't worry, I'll know. love you're talking about. You can't dope it like that. What are you picking, a guy or a horse? Wouldn't expect a gambler to understand. Do you want to hear a gambler's point of view on the big heartthrob? No. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you. Oh, no. When my love comes along. Oh, no. in again later in case you want to take a crack at the other cheek. Thank you. 
bushel and a peck and a hug around the neck, a hug around the neck and a barrel and a heave, a barrel and a heave and I'm talking in my sleep about you. Pigeon. What have you got there? A book. A book. You're always reading books. You're becoming a regular bookie. Nathan, darling, this is very interesting. The doctor gave it to me. I went to him about my cold. How is your cold? Oh, it's the same. So the doctor asked me how long I had had it. And I told him a long time. So he said to read this book because he said it might be due to psychology. You don't have that, do you? Nathan, this is the psychology that tells you why girls do same kinds of things. What do you think I have in this box? Sally's Wedding Shop. I can't guess. It's a wedding veil. I've had it for three years. I won't show it to you because it's bad luck. Would you like to see it? <laughs> it's bad luck. So you see, Nathan, darling, I got the veil. All we need now is our license and our blood tests. Our what? Our blood test, it's a law. What a city. First they close my crap game, then they open my veins. Nathan, you're not planning to run that crap game again. Adelaide, why do you think I gave up the crap game in the first place? It's because I love you. I don't want us two to be the happiest couple that there is in the world. You, I'm all dated over. Society Max tomorrow, and he breaks out on account of your dopey crap game. Honest, Adelaide, I pity you. <laughs> Adelaide, look at me. I'm down on my knees. Oh, get up. It reminds me of your crap game. <laughs> Adelaide, we're going to be all right. After all, we're going to get married. I don't believe you anymore. Come on, cheer up, honey. Mm -hmm. You'll feel better tomorrow. That's my girl. See you tomorrow. It says here, the average unmarried female, basically insecure due to some Frustration may react with psychosomatic symptoms difficult to endure, affecting the upper respiratory tract. In other words, just from waiting around for that plain little thing. 
band of gold, a Pison can develop a cold. It says here, the female remaining single, just in the legal sense, shows a new neurotic tendency. See note. Organic symptoms, toxic or hypertense, involving the eye, the ear, the nose, and throat. In other words, just from wondering whether the wedding is on or off, a Pison can develop a cough when they get on the train to Niagara and they can hear church bells chime. The compartment is air conditioned and the mood's sublime. Then they get off at Saratoga for the 14th time. A Pison can develop la grip, huh, la grip, la post nasal drip. just following Miss Sarah, and you should have seen her. She gave him a look that would have cooled off a moose during mating season. <laughs> Great! Just so he don't take her to Havana. Havana? He couldn't even take that doll to New Rochelle. <laughs> Where's Nathan? He ought to start lining up the game. I don't know. I suppose he's trying to see Adelaide. She's mad at him again. That Miss Adelaide, always taking his mind off of honest work. Yeah. Too bad such a smart businessman like Nathan had to go and fall in love with his own fiance. Benny, that is his weakness, and we should be tolerant, because I am told it's a worldwide weakness. When you see a guy, you put stars in the sky, you can bet that he's doing it for some dog.
finally lost him. I do think you should have paid some attention to him. Yes, he attended every street meeting we had this morning. He must be very interested in our work. Very. By the way, you spoke beautifully this morning, Miss Sarah. No, I can't reach these people. I never should have volunteered for this post. Well, let's go into lunch. General Cartwright! Good morning, Sarah Arvide. Good morning, General. We didn't know you were coming to town, General. Sarah, there's something I want to talk to you about. Won't you come inside? Have some lunch with us. No, I don't have time, dear. Sarah, we at headquarters have decided to close this branch of the mission. Close the mission? Uh, General, please. Someone can do good here, even if I can't. Yes, we've announced a big meeting for tomorrow night. But will anyone be here? Pardon me, I couldn't help overhearing. Allow me to introduce myself. Sky Masterson, former sinner. How do you do? How do you do? I wish to protest the closing of this mission. I believe Miss Sarah can do great things here. I'm glad to hear you say that, but I'm not so certain. A dollar will get you 10. What? Why don't I make a suggestion? Why don't you come to tomorrow night's meeting and see for yourself? Well, if I thought the mission had a chance. General, I personally guarantee you one dozen genuine sinners. Well, hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. <laughs> got your carnations, right? Remember, no one will be let into the game without they got their red carnation. It's like a password. Okay, but where's the game? I'll tell you in one minute. Nathan, is it all set? Can I tell the boys that we're playing at the Biltmore Garage? Not yet. I gotta stall them for a while. It's almost 11 o'clock. They won't hang around there much longer. So sue me. Detroit. If you do not have a place for your craft game tonight, so tell us. Then we'll seek elsewhere for entertainment. Now, 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 take it easy, Harry. I'd like you to meet Big Jewel from Chicago. <laughs> how, how, do you, how do you do, Big Jewel? I came here to shoot crap. Let's shoot crap. Now, <laughs> if, now, if there is no craft game tonight, then I am sure Big Jewel will be considerably displeased. And Big Jewel does not like to be displeased. Now, Big Jewel, let me tell you that when Nathan Detroit arra when Nathan Detroit arranges something, you 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 can count on it that when Nathan Detroit arranges so well, well, most interesting gathering indeed. The Cream of Society, Angie the Ox, Society Max, Rusty Charlie. Liver lips Louie. What's the occasion, gentlemen? Well, we, it, we... It's a party! Indeed, what kind of party? Goodbye, Gail. We'll see you tomorrow. It's a bachelor dinner, and Nathan's getting married. What? That's right, officer. It's a bachelor dinner. Nathan's getting married. Yes, sir. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. Which nobody cannot deny. Oh, Nathan, I'm so thrilled. Why did you tell me? It, it was a surprise. But when I saw you standing here with all these fine gentlemen, I never dreamed it was a bachelor dinner. I thought it was Bachelor a dinner. That's exactly what it was. Bachelor dinner. Just think, after 14 years, I'm finally going to become Mrs. Nathan Detroit. Time certainly does fly. So tell me, Nathan, when is the happy day? When will it be, Nathan? <laughs> well, Nathan, these fellows were nice enough to give you a bachelor dinner. The least you can do is tell them the wedding date. We, well, we need time for a license. You could elope. What? You can drive down to Maryland. They'll marry you right away. They don't even ask for a blood test. Ain't that unhealthy? 
Oh, Nathan, let's do it! Well, what the heck? Yeah, Nathan! Yeah, Nathan. My congratulations to Nathan, and I only hope there's nothing in heredity. Nathan, I got so many things to do before we be alone. You'll be at the hot box tomorrow night. I'll have a table reserved, and I'll be dressed up in whatever wheel. It'll, 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 it'll open. Oh, Nathan, I am so happy. The Eric you and Lucky Fell. The beautiful doll, indeed. Don't you agree, Big Joe? Let you crack. <laughs> you got to find a place for the game. How can I? The money from Sky ain't come yet. Well, maybe it's not gonna come. Maybe he took the doll to Havana. He couldn't have. How could he have taken the doll to Havana? Dolce de leche. It's Spanish for milkshake. Dolce de leche? Uh, what's in it besides milk? Uh, sort of native flavoring. What's the name of the flavoring? Bacardi. <laughs> uh, doesn't Bacardi have alcohol in it? Only enough to act as a preservative. <laughs> you know, this would be a wonderful way to get children to drink milk. Two more Dolce de leches! Woo! Are you all right? Am I all right? Ask me how do I feel? Ask me now that we're cozy and clinging. Well, sir, all I can say is if I were a bell, I'd be ringing. From the moment we kissed tonight, that's the way I just got Well, sir, all I can say is if I were a
We better hurry if you want to catch the plane back to New York. I don't want to go back to New York. I'm taking you back. You're no gentleman. Do you know why I met you in the first place? I made a bet. That's how I met you. I made a bet. How else would a girl get to meet a gambler? I have to think what's best for you. Oh, you talk just like a missionary. I must have behaved very badly. No, you were fine. Oh, golly, I don't know how to get home with all this stuff. Oh, Sky, hello. Hi, Miss Adelaide. How are you? Oh, fine, Sky. Look, the gals just threw me a kitchen shower. That's wonderful. You know Miss Sarah. How do you do? Glad to meet you. Oh, you know, Sky, we're eloping tomorrow night, right after the hot box, Nathan and I. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, Sky. Gee, I feel just like a housewife already. <laughs> Miss Adelaide sure seems happy. She's in love. What time is it? I don't know, four o'clock? I've never been up this late before. How do you like it? It's so peaceful and wonderful. You're figuring out something I've known for quite a while now. Obadiah. Obadiah? What's that? Obadiah Masterson. That's my real name. You're the first person I've ever told it to. I've never been in love before. Now all at once it's you. Sarah, dear. Good morning, Brother Masterson. Good morning. We've been out all night, and guess what? The streets were full of sinners. Exactly. It was wonderful. Where have you been, Sarah? I've been to Cuba. You're even more tired than I am. What is this? Nathan, what is this?
my time. This is the first time I ever saw a crap game going full blast in a mission. Crap game? Sarah, you know I had nothing to do with this. Sarah! This wouldn't have happened if I hadn't. I never should have gone with you. It was wrong! You went to help the mission. Did I? Will I see you tomorrow? Everyone's welcome at the mission. That's not what I mean. It's no good, Sky. You said it yourself. It's no good. Why not? What kind of doll are you anyway? I'm a mission doll. <laughs> And the necklace, the bag, the shoes, and the hat that was laid for the aid, I recall. Then last night in his apartment, his girlfriend decided to call. And I said, as I ran down the hall, Take back your mink, take back your piles. What made you think that I was one of those girls? Take back the gown, the shoes and the hat. I may be down, but I'm not flat as all that. I thought that each expensive gift you'd arrange was a token of your esteem. But when I think of what you want in exchange, it all seems a horrible dream. So, take back your me those old worn out pelts, and go.
Adelaide. What? I bring a message for her from Nathan. What's the message? Nathan's aunt in Pittsburgh has fallen ill with... A rare tropical disease. Say, that's not bad. Nicely. Where is Nathan? The crap game's still going on. Since last night? Big Jew, being a large loser, does not wish the game to terminate. Where is the game? Are you looking for some action? Not at the moment. I gave my marker to someone and I'd kind of like to clean it up before... I'll meet you outside. Oh, nicely. What about Nathan's message? Oh, Adelaide. Nathan's in Pittsburgh. Nathan's in, Nathan's in Pittsburgh with a rare tropical... And, uh, goodbye. What? I don't understand. Sky, Nathan has to come here tonight. We're eloping to get married. Is it that crap game again? Why does it surprise you? But he promised to change. Change, change. Why is it the minute you dolls get a guy that you like, you take him right in for alterations? What about you men? Why can't you marry people like other people do and live normal like people? Have a home with wallpaper and bookends? Guys like Nathan Detroit and yeah, Sky Masterson, we don't belong in a life like that. So when dolls get mixed up with guys like us, it's no good. I'll see you in a couple of months. Will you see Nathan before you go? Maybe. Tell him I never want to talk to him again and have him call me here. Why don't you just get another guy? Wait till you fall for somebody. You'll find out. Yeah. In other words, just from waiting around at a table reserved for two, a person can develop the flu. You can bundle her up in her woolies, and I mean the warmest brand. You can wrap her in sweaters and coats till it's more than her frame can stand. If she still gets the feeling she's naked from looking at her left hand, a Pison can develop the flu, <clears throat> the flu, 103.2. So much virus inside that her microscope slide Looks like a day at the zoo Just from wanting her memories in writing And a story her folks can be told A Pisces can develop a cold So fast, Sarah, not so fast. Just 
want to get away from this whole place to go someplace where, where, where the sinners are all respectable and well behaved. You, you saw what happened last night. They gambled in our mission. And someday they'll be praying there too. Even a man like Sky Masterson, he came seeking refuge. He came seeking me. Did you know that? I knew that the minute he started picking on you, but I didn't know you were going to get stuck on him. The man I love will not be a gambler. But if you love him enough, Sarah, dear. Good evening, Miss Sarah, Brother Abernathy. How goes it with the soul saving? Tonight's the big meeting, isn't it? It's supposed to be. The general is coming. The general's a tough doll, eh? Grandfather, we've got to hurry. Miss Sarah, you seem to have forgotten something. But being a gambler, I never forget things like this. You hold my marker for 12 sinners tonight. Mr. Masterson, last night the mission was filled with your friends. Let us say that we're even. If you don't pay off that marker, I'll tell the whole town you're a dirty welcher. Nicely, where's the crap game? Well, Scott, it's about a 10 minute walk from here. Which way? This way. All going. I came in to shoot crap. Fair enough. Let's go home. Yeah. Yeah, let's go home. Come on. Yeah, you see, Big Jewel, the boys are slightly fatigued from playing for quite a while now. Namely, 24 hours. I do not care who is tired. I'm out 10 G's, so nobody leaves. You see, gentlemen, I begin to see the logic of Big Jewel. It is not that he is a sore loser, it is just that he prefers to win. Right, Big Jewel? I will now play in credit. Give me the dice. I'm shooting 2,000. In Detroit, I'll roll you. Willie or Nilton. If I lose, I'll give you my marker. And if I lose? You will pay him cash. Okay. Let me hear from Big Jewel. You will pay me cash. Put up your dough. I just remembered. Adelaide and I are eloping tonight. Adelaide will be waiting for me. Get up to 2,000. Wouldn't it be more convenient if I put it right in your pocket? Get it up. Ha, 11. I win. That cleans me. I'll now play you guys. Here they are. Good evening, gentlemen. Hey, Sky. Hey, Sky. Hey, Sky. Hey, Sky. What's up? Well, fresh blood. You looking for some action? Not at the moment. I would like to talk to some of you guys. We ain't talking. We're shooting crap. I'm only asking for a minute. It has to do with Miss Sarah Brown's mission. Say, who is this guy? That's the fellow I was telling you about. He took the mission down from Havana. Look, fella, you're slowing up the action around here. How'd you like to make a small wager on a proposition? What's the proposition? Am I right-handed or left-handed? Well, I know a thing like that. I'll give you a clue. <laughs> Kindly return that to Sears Roebuck. Look, you guys, 
Tonight at Miss Sarah Brown's mission at 409 West 49th Street, they're holding a midnight prayer meeting. And I promised them some sinners, and when it comes to sinning, most of you guys are high up among the paint cards. I wouldn't say, say that. I'm I'm I ain't spending no evening into a hallelujah joint. I guarantee you the air in the, in the mission is a lot cleaner than the air down here. I know. I hate you that. And it would help, it wouldn't hurt you to learn something besides rolling a four the hard way. Oh, yeah, I, guess, I guess so. Well, I tried. See you around, Nathan. Okay, Sky. About that Havana business, I don't have the money to pay you. You don't need to pay me. You won the bet. But I thought you took the doll to Havana. You thought wrong. Get up, Big Jewel. I now have money to roll you with my dice. Nothing doing. With your dice, he can't even make a pass to save his soul. What did you say? I said with his dice, he can't even make a pass to save his soul. Well, maybe I can make a pass to save yours, and yours, and yours, and yours. I bet you each a thousand dollars against the marker for your souls. One meeting. Oh, fine by me. Buy me too. You too, Nathan. A thousand dollars against your soul. Me? I don't even know if I got one. You got one somewhere. Now give me the dice. And give me the room. I got a lot more than dough riding on this one. They call you lady. But there is room for doubt. At times you have a very unladylike way of running out. You're on this date with me. The pickings have been lush. And yet before this evening is over, you might give me the brush. You might forget your manners. You might refuse to stay And so the best that I can do is pray Luck be a lady tonight Luck be a lady tonight Luck if you've ever been a lady to begin with Luck be a lady tonight Luck let a gentleman see how nice a dame you can be I know the way you treated other guys you've been with Luck be a lady with me A lady wouldn't make little snake eyes at me When I bet my life on this roll So let's keep the party polite Never get out of my sight. Stick with me, baby. I'm the fella you came in with. Luck be a lady. Luck be a lady. Luck be a lady. Luck be a lady. Tonight. Ha! explain to you about last night. I hope he ain't sore about it. Please let us not have a vulgar scene. After all, we are civilized people. We do not have to conduct ourselves like a slob. Adelaide, how could you get upset about this? 
over one lousy elopement. It's no use, Nathan. I have succeeded in your not being able to upset no more. I've got you completely out of my... Huh. Huh. Achoo! Oh, Nathan! <laughs> Adelaide, baby, don't ever do that to me again. I can't stand it. After all, we're gonna have a little white house with a green fence, just like the Whitney colors. Look, Nathan, we've still got time. It's not even midnight yet. Five minutes to 12. Let's elope right now. Okay. Wait, no, I can't. We'll be late. No. I can't. Nathan, why can't we elope right now? Well, I gotta go to a prayer meeting. Nathan, <laughs> this is the biggest lie you have ever told me. But I promise you, it's true, Adelaide. You promised me this, you promised me that. You promised me everything under the sun. You give me a kiss and you're grabbing your hand. You watch the race say, Dad, when I think of the time. What can you do me? I love you. You gamble it here, you gamble it there, you gamble on everything all except me, and I'm sick of you keeping me up in the air to your back of the money again when I think of the time gone by. Adelaide. And I think of the way I try. Adelaide. I could honestly die. <laughs> Serve a paper and sue me, sue me. What can you do me? I love you. A holler and hate me, hate me. Go ahead, hate me. When I you wind up in jail, don't come to me to bail you. Right, already call a policeman. All right, already it's true. So new, so sue me, sue me. What can you do me? I love you. You're at it again. You're running the game. I'm not gonna play second fiddle to that. I'm sick of you, Carter. I'm strolling around and I'm telling you now the words through when I think of the time gone by. Adelaide. And I think of the way I try. Adelaide. I could honestly die. Sue me. Sue me. Shoot bullets through me. I anyone coming. I think something is very wrong. General, I know what's wrong. I'm wrong. I failed. I've spoken to these people day after day, but my words haven't reached them. I think you had better. Welcome, brothers, sisters. Welcome. Everybody here? Where's Nathan Detroit? Present. Here you are, Miss Sarah. One dozen or more assorted sinners. Sorry we didn't have time to clean them up for you. Won't you, gentlemen, ladies, sit down? Mm-hmm. Sit down, all of you. And this is a mission, not Roseland, so I suggest that you do not indulge in any unpleasantness. Since I am supposed to depart the Point West tonight, I leave Nathan Detroit, Major Domo, in my place. Nathan, anyone who does not conduct himself according to Hoyle, We'll answer to Sky Masterson personally. What a remarkable young man. (laughs) 
So remember that, you guys. Brother Abernathy, your dice. Gentlemen, ladies, we are honored tonight. This meeting will be conducted by the head of our organization, General Cartwright. It is so wonderful to see our mission graced by the presence of so many evil-looking sinners. <laughs> now, who would like to start the ball rolling by giving testimony? Benny, I ain't no stool pigeon. <clears throat> Come now, brothers and sisters. I know it is difficult, but let one of you give testimony to the sin that is in your heart. Anyone? <clears throat> Harry! I uh, know. Harry the horse! Well, it was like what Sky said when he rolled us for our souls. I beg your pardon? Sky and Masterson rolled us each a thousand dollars against our souls. That's why we're here. I don't think I understand. I do, General. He means that they are only here because Mr. Masterson won them in a dice game. How wonderful! This whole meeting is the result of gambling? It shows how good can come out of evil. Sergeant Sarah, you have done remarkable work. Uh, thank you. Anybody else? Aha. You will now hear testimony from Nicely Nicely Johnson. Brother Nicely Nicely Johnson. Well, it happened to me kind of funny. Like a dream. That's it, a dream. Tell us in your own words. I dreamed last night I got on the boat to heaven and by some chance I had brought my dice along And there I stood And I hollered someone feed me But the passengers they know right from wrong Amen to that, brother For oh, the people said sit down Sit down, you're rocking the boat People said sit down Sit down, you're rocking the boat Sit down, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. Sit down, you're rocking, sit down, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. Sit down, you're rocking the boat. Sit down. could do for you, Brother Brannigan? <laughs> Maybe you would care to testify? I'll do my testifying in court, where I'll testify that you ran a crack in this mission last night. Miss Sarah, you were standing there when they came out. You saw them. Aren't these the fellows? I never saw these men before in my life. <laughs> That's a right broad. <laughs> now, if you would excuse us, officer, we would like to go on with our meeting. Sister Sarah. 
We all have a confession to make. We all did run a crap game in the mission last night, but we all are sorry, ain't we boys? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm real sorry. <laughs> but I did another terrible thing. I bet a certain guy that he couldn't take a doll away with him on a trip. This I should not have done, although it didn't do any harm as I won the bet. You won the bet? Yeah, the guy said he didn't take the doll to Havana. Well, that makes me feel a lot better. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. Gentlemen and ladies, we will now turn to number 244. Follow the fold. Follow the fold and stray no more. Stray no more. Stray no more. Hoi! Oh, hello. Good evening. I'm Adelaide, the well-known fiancé. Oh, yes. Uh, when are you getting married? The 12th of never. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but try to be forgiving and understanding, and the pain will go away. In the Bible, it tells us in Obadiah. Uh, Obadiah? Obadiah! <laughs> You've got a boyfriend named Obadiah, huh? Obadiah was an ancient prophet. Ooh, don't tell me. Nobody cries like that over an old guy. Whoever it is, you got it bad. You know, when I saw you with Sky Masterson the other <laughs> Oh, no, not Sky. You're not in love with Sky, you poor thing. I thought I hated him. Well, I thought I hated Nathan. Nathan. I still think I hate him. And that's love. <laughs> Adelaide, can men like Skye ever change? For 14 years I've tried to change Nathan. I've always thought how wonderful he would be if he was different. But they just can't change. A little while ago at our prayer meeting, there were a lot of gamblers who acted as though maybe they could change. Gamblers at your prayer meeting? Was Nathan Detroit there? I'm sure I heard that name. I think so. How do you like that, rat? Just when he should be lying, he's telling the truth. I'm glad I'm through with him. And you ought to be glad you're through with Skye, too. I am. What, are we crazy or something? At Wanamaker's and Saxon Cloyd, a lesson I've been taught. You can't put alterations on a dress you haven't bought. At any vegetable market from Borneo to Nome, you must unsqueeze a melon till you get the melon home. You simply got to gamble. You get no guarantee. Now, doesn't that kind of apply to you and I? You and me? What? Why not? Why not what? Marry the man today. 
trouble though he may be. Much as he likes to play, crazy and wild and free. Marry the man today, rather than sigh in sorrow. Marry the man today and change his ways tomorrow. Carefully expose him to domestic life, and if he ever tries to stray from you, have a pot roast, have a headache. Smokes. What's the matter? I didn't get a place for the wedding. Oh, Nathan! How about the Biltmore Garage? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Life is a big crap game, and the devil is using loaded dice. Where's the crap game? <laughs> brother Masterson? Yes, Brother Detroit? May we get married in your mission, Adelaide and I? Certainly. I married Brother Masterson and Sister Sarah. Glad to do the same for you. Congratulations. I will lay you eight to five, and you will be very happy. <laughs> what Obadiah means is... Obadiah! He wishes you every happiness, and so do I. Thank you very much. I know we're going to be very happy. We're going to live in a little place in the country, and Nathan will be beside me. Every single night. Uh, 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 <coughs> when you see a guy who's four stars in the sky, you can bet that he's doing it for some dog. When you spot a John waiting out in the rain, chances are he's insane. There's only a John could be for a Jane. When you see a J. 
attention, paying all kinds of rent for a flat.